Hi there, in this tutorial today we're going to be having a quick look at cropping and reframing your video in post-production. Now I've had a number of questions asking why I shoot and present my films in a specific way in relation to their aspect ratio. So if I just go ahead now and open up a video of mine and this is actually showreel so it's actually a collection of videos so it gives you a pretty good idea. If I just go ahead and full screen it what you'll see is if you're viewing this on a 16 by 9 so generally your normal computer size monitors or your normal HD TVs you'll have black bars across the top and bottom of your screen now this is to do with the aspect ratio and this particular aspect ratio is around 235 or 239 to 1 and it's a common what you would refer to as a cinematic or widescreen aspect ratio used by lots of films today so we'll just go ahead and come out of that. Now you can read up all about aspect ratio by just popping it into Google and there's all sorts of fascinating articles that go into the history and the reason behind it. Now one aspect ratio that I'm typically fond of is 2.39 or 2.4 to 1 which is almost the same and pretty much indiscernible to the human eye and this is known as the scope aspect ratio and this was actually developed by Panavision back in the 50s I think up until about 1970 it actually used to be 2.35 to 1 but now the more common 2.39 which is commonly referred to as 2.4 to 1 aspect ratio is used and if we have a look up here in Adobe Premiere I have two shots, one that is in a 16 by 9 ratio on the left hand side and one that is in a 239 to 1 aspect ratio. And you can see that the 239 to 1 shot on the right, as the mass would imply, is obviously a lot wider than the 16 to 9. Now there's all sorts of creative reasons why you would use this type of aspect ratio and it's certainly not appropriate for lots of type of material. However, a type of shot that it does lend itself to is typically your landscape shots. And I do quite a bit of drone filming and a lot of my drone shots tend to be long sweeping shots of open landscapes. So using an aspect ratio that is wider left to right and actually narrower top to bottom makes a lot of sense. Now certainly with consumer cameras, even prosumer cameras, even full on professional cameras, it can be very difficult to shoot in this type of aspect ratio without anamorphic lenses. So if it's impossible to actually shoot in this aspect ratio, you have to rely on post-production techniques to be able to achieve the final look. And what I thought would be useful is to go over how I achieve this using Adobe Premiere Pro. There's various different ways of doing this, but the one that I find works best for me works as follows. So what I'll firstly do is create a new sequence in the native resolution and aspect ratio of the clip as it came off the camera. So if I take my clip here and I drag it down onto this icon down here, that will create a new sequence. What I'll go ahead and do now is I'm just going to copy a clip that I already had onto this sequence so we can get an idea with a specific bit of footage. So if we just quickly play through this, we'll see that we've just got a tracking drone shot of a lake and a hill, sort of cloudy, sort of misty hill in the background. And what you'll notice at the bottom of the screen and the top of the screen, there's lots of space. So we could quite easily sacrifice that. We'll also notice that the horizon isn't quite straight and I can also fix that as well when I crop it to my 239 to 1 aspect ratio. So what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and I will create a new item and I'm gonna create an adjustment layer and I'll just click OK to that. I'll bring my adjustment layer and I need to make it so it covers the clip. And that just sits above it. Now what we can apply to the adjustment layer is a crop. So if we go to our effects bin, if we type in crop, take that effect and we'll drop it on our adjustment layer. If we then jump into our effects control, select our adjustment layer and what we can do now is dial in a crop to the top and bottom of that adjustment layer. Now what we want to do is we want to add around 12% crop to the top and 12% to the bottom. And what you'll see there is we now have our black bars at the top and bottom but what we haven't done at the moment is crop any of the footage so the footage is all still there and that has a real big advantage that I'm going to show you in just a second. Now the 12% isn't 
100% exact. So if you want the exact 239 to 1 aspect ratio, you'll just need to do a little bit of maths and work out exactly what the percentage is. But around 12% gives you effectively somewhere between a 235 and a 2391 crop. Now the advantage of having the crop applied to the adjustment layer is that we haven't lost any of our footage. And what we can do is we can reposition our footage and move it up and down vertically to reframe it to give us the perfect shot in post. What I'm also going to do is we said that this horizon isn't quite straight so I need to adjust the rotation. So if I go ahead and probably just tweak that by only a degree, we're just going to scale it up to 102% very slightly. And now what we can do with the position is change the Y value and we can move the shot up and down. Now I notice that I've got a couple of ducks here which is uh, quite nice in the shot and I want to include those. And there's nice reflection down here. We've got a few ripples, not too much going on up in the sky. So I'll probably move it up ever so slightly just to reframe it. And then we'll just go ahead and play through. Let's just bring that back a few seconds. And that's looking like a really sort of nice balanced shot. Here come the ducks. And for me, that's working pretty well. Now, if I take the adjustment layer off, you can see there the reframing we've done. So from the normal 16 by nine, we've now got this black section here where we've rotated the footage and moved it down. And let's pop the adjustment layer back on. We've got a nice, you could call it cinematic looking if you want, but it's not really about the cinematic look, it's more about reframing it, getting the shot looking the way I want it to do. Now what you can do with this reframing is that you can also add in a subtle little bit of camera movement, or you can use it to potentially correct a slight inaccurate camera movement that you made while filming. Now here's another example. So here we have a shot where the camera tilts up, and maybe I'm thinking it's just tilting a little bit too slow and I want to speed that up. So what I can do is I can actually add some position keyframes. So if I click the stopwatch and turn that on, I want it to move up slightly. So what I can do is I can actually move the framing, say to around here. And so if I just zoom out so you can actually see what's going on, you'll see here the blue line that actually gives you the limits of the frame. And as I move, what I've done is I'm just pulling that frame down. And obviously, you can't see that because it's hidden behind the black bars. But what it's just doing is just speeding up that tilting motion of the camera, which I didn't do quite quickly enough when I actually filmed it. But I can just use this reframing method just to make the shot happen a little bit faster. So I'll just go ahead and just let that play through. And hopefully... That should look pretty natural like it was done in camera. So the other question I get now that I've applied the crop and reframed my image, how do I export my video? So if we go ahead to export and media, what you'll see is that it gives us a preview here of our video with the black bars in. And if we export at the resolution that the source material was, we'll have that video with those black bars kind of hard encoded into the video. Now, some people like to output the video so it doesn't have those black bars on and is in that true aspect ratio. So if you do play it on a super widescreen 21 by 9 monitor, it won't have any black bars. And the way to do that is to first select the source tab and then highlight this icon here, which is cropping the video. And what you can actually do is bring the bars or take the bars out and make sure that you just have the actual video. Now you'll see over here, it's, if I hover the mouse, it's telling me it's 4096 by 1632. But you'll see that my video settings are still 4096 by 2160. So what I need to do is go to my output tab, drop that down and put change output size to match source and it should go ahead now and select 4096 by 1632. You'll see that the black bars have gone, and now when we go to export our video, we'll have a video exported without any black bars. And this will play full screen without any black bars on the super widescreen 21 by nine monitors. 
Hopefully that's been useful. If you've got any questions, do drop them in the comments below. Feel free to like the video and please subscribe for more. Thanks very much. See you later.